So Arctic has recently released a new thermal paste product, Arctic MX5, which begs the question, what's the difference between MX5, MX4 and MX2? So we'll try and answer that uh, in this video. But just by going on their website, you can figure out a smorgasbord of information. For instance, did you know that MX5 is the highest thermal conductivity thermal paste? It, that's incredible. Since thermal paste has been around, the, every all of them have been trying to be the best, have the highest thermal conductivity, but this one has managed Can to... Can I just interject there for, for one second? Sure, what's going on? Well, they say MX5 has the highest thermal conductivity, but there isn't really a qualifier for it. Oh. Yeah, they don't have a spec or data sheet on their site for MX5. Uh, they also claim that MX4 has the same thermal conductivity. Uh, they got a spec sheet for that, though, and it says that its thermal conductivity is 8.5 and MX2's is 5.6, so... Quick question. Yeah, go on, what's that? What's that supposed to mean? Well, I don't exactly know, but I have been assured that higher numbers are better in this case. So MX4 should be better than MX2, right? And we'll need to verify that with some test data. Test data, sure. So have you got any? Absolutely, yes I have, yeah. Oh, you are, uh, yeah, n now? Well, we are releasing a video to show how these things perform, so I think it would be a good idea for us to show some test data along with it. I mean, sure, if you wanted to be professional about this. Come on, show us what you got. Okay, okay, so the first test we did was a squeeze test to see how the different thermal pastes spread out when applying some pressure. This was conducted with a cutting mat and applying as close to as equal amounts of thermal paste as I could, and then pressing a glass panel on top of it while applying some weight. Quick question. Sure. Did the glass or the weights to create the pressure cost us anything? No, no, the glass came from a case that we tested before and the power supply units were stuff we just had lying around. Excellent, just check in, as you were, please continue. Okay, so the width of the thermal paste was then measured with the glass panel and some weight added to it. Then I added more weight, left it overnight to see how it spread out, and then when I came back the following morning, I measured the difference of from the first paste to the second paste. Now, now since I can't accurately measure out a specific amount of thermal paste since I haven't got the equipment for that. We're having to use the the change between each thermal paste application as a rate of change rather than a specific figure. Speaking of which, is there any chance that I could buy some more equipment perhaps to, to make these tests better in the future? Well, that depends. Depends on what? Will it cost money? Only a little. I mean, it shouldn't take too much. No, 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 no. No. Why not? Well, it's not Christmas anymore. We're not getting enough ad revenue and we can barely afford to not pay you. What? Huh? So anyway, it turns out that MX5 is the least viscous and then MX2 follows it very closely behind and MX4 is by far the, 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 the most viscous. But what I decided to do was add a bit more pressure just to see how it would really pan out with, with piling it on. We didn't have to buy anything to get more pressure, did we? No, no, no. I, I just lent on the glass panel. Way to innovate there. You go, man. Thank you. So the, basically this turned out a little bit differently so it turned out that mx2 was the least viscous here followed by mx5 and then again mx4 was way off which seems to correlate with the way that it's all panned out when i've been using the thermal paste so that's pretty good but at least this way we can put some highly questionable numbers to a highly questionable experiment but maybe in the future perhaps maybe i could get some other stuff to make this a little bit not happening okie dokie then uh, so the thermal testing i applied the thermal paste liberally to the ihs of the 6700k and then mounted the noctua nh u9s chromax to it with two different fan setups i had the full speed setup so that it was running at 100 percent fan speed which meant we could get some slightly cooler temperatures on the cpu and then i also had the lower setup with 60 percent fan speed so we could get Get some higher temperatures and see more separation. I had two different tests, which was Prime T5 and of small FFTs, and then we also had Fermark running the combined loop test or combined test on a loop. This gave us three different bench or three different runs of two different benchmarks of two different setups, which ends up being well, three different paces, which is like 36 different setups, which is not too bad. And I also tested Noctua's NTH1 to have a control outside of the Arctic brand. Not bad. So did we get any consistent findings? Absolutely. It turns out NTH1 is pretty much better than most of the Arctic pastes. Oh. Uh. 
Well, I guess it was good job it was included then, so we didn't get some kind of echo chamber style conclusion to this. Oh, without a doubt. But there's more to it than that. So that result came from the 55 watt average CP load testing of Fire Strike, the combined test looping for 10 minutes. Whereas if we crank it up to 100 watts with priority 5 small FFTs, the MX5, MX2, and NTH1 thermal paste step ahead and are pretty much equal to each other, and MX4 does lag noticeably further behind. No way, that's weird. So based on the testing then, what would you recommend? Well, combining this data with the cost of the thermal paste, you find that in Britain, you're better off going for MX2, whereas in America, you're better off going for NTH1, and in Europe, you could go for MX5 or MX2, based on the price there, roughly equal, and the performance, of course. Quick question, is it money related? I, kind of. Oh, come on, how could I even have spent any more money on this? I made the graphs myself, I didn't hire anyone to do them for me. I... No, 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 sorry, I was just wondering, Based on the amount of pastes you get in these tubes and how much they cost, how have we accounted for this in the test results? Oh, well, the, the price comes from trying to get uh, the price of a tube of thermal paste as close to four grams as possible to normalize the economies of scale. Four grams is pretty good. It gives you a good handful of uh, a thermal paste application. So most people would be into that sort of stuff. And then making a cost per gram out of the, uh, the total cost of each of those four gram tubes of thermal paste. But if they're not four grams, then you'll divide that by the amount. So say for NTH1, it's three and a half grams for say $10. And for MX2, MX5, MX4, it's four grams for say $10 or whatever the amount is. All right, sounds good. We also had to invert the thermal performance measurement when it came to the value price versus performance calculation. See, normally when you're doing price versus performance, performance higher is better, but in this case, higher is worse. And the price obviously higher is worse and lower is better. So if you have to, and thank you for your time. Mm. So it turns out practically speaking that MX5 is basically equal to MX2 and it is better than MX4, and but not quite as good as NTH1. So practically speaking, I mean, if you can get any of these uh, a couple of dollars cheaper on a sale or some discount, then it that drastically changes the price versus performance. And if the extra or the couple of degrees difference you might get from one to, compared to the other is important to you, then it may be worth just spending a little bit more anyway, even if the price versus performance isn't quite right. And um, based on the fluctuation of price, I mean, I'm, I must have taken you a long time to do it. I appreciate that. But I, it kind of seems like it wasn't really worth doing. So a big thanks to Science Guy for sorting out all that tedious testing. At least I don't have to. And a big thanks to my Patreon supporters over on Patreon for supporting everything we do here. If you want to pick up any of these thermal pastes, then please consider using the Amazon associate links in the video description, which will give a small kickback to the channel if you buy anything through those links. If you want to consider subscribing to check out more like this, liking and sharing the video, and maybe even commenting to let me know what you want to see uh, in future videos. And apart from that, a huge thanks for checking this one out, and I'll catch you in the next one.